Hey everyone, Jason with Iron Trap Garage, and I'm bringing you guys another episode on my 1932 Ford Hot Rod truck build. Now, if you guys happen to catch my last video, you could see me fabricating custom radiator mounts. And for that, I was repurposing and reusing a section of the old frame, which brings us to today's video, where I'm at the back of the truck and there is no frame. So I'm gonna be finally taking my box tubing, which is 3 16 inch thick, two by four size for a dimension, and go ahead and finally making myself a frame so I can get one step closer to making this a roller. So let's get started. So I went ahead and leveled out the frame. If you look here, that's within one tenth, which I'm going to call as acceptable, considering this is a uh, old frame. Because if you look here, I go right there, it bounces back and forth between 0.2, so 0 0.2, 0 0.1, so zero. So we're bouncing back and forth. But this frame, I would say. That's as level as I'm going to be able to get it uh, in this garage. I had to put jack stands under the front and then slowly work it back to get the front up. Instead of like uh, using shims, I just simply used the fr uh, jack stand itself and the curvature of the frame and just moved it back to bring up the front to where I could get it to um, as close as I can again without having a frame table. So now that this is good, I'm confident and I can start the process of uh, building the back half of the frame. went ahead and put the rear end on jack stands. I had these jack stands in as close as I can get them for what I'm about to do here. As you can see on the dial indicator, or the angle finder rather, I'm at zero degrees. I also have the rear end set at 88 degrees. Uh, reading online, it looks like you wanna have one, anywhere between one to three degrees of angle. A pinion angle rather um, so I'm splitting the difference going to happy medium so anywhere between 87 and 89 so if I go 88 that gives me a little bit of wiggle room either way uh, and here I have the leaf spring I have shackles on and I have this just laying here sitting here relaxed and sitting at 50 inches so that's where I know uh, the gap needs to be from radius rod to radius rod. I went ahead also and set the radius rod on the table. As you can see the table in the bubble as far as level. And this is actually on a 20 degree angle. So now what I need to do is find the center of the rear end, which I have marked here. I'll have to go ahead and measure up here again and mark it in the center and then measure 25 inches on each side. And then these are the brackets that I got, which I'm gonna have to actually modify a little bit because I can't go straight on. I have to turn it the 20 degrees here. So that way the rear leaf itself is square to uh, the frame for when I go to do that. So I'll go ahead and get these set up to fit properly. Then I'll be able to do some measurements, get this tack welded in place.
All right, so I finally was able to get this tacked in place. Shut the welder off so you guys can hear me. So uh, finally, I'm able to get this tacked in place. And uh, I don't have a, uh, like a sturdy table and my workbench itself is not flat. Found that out the hard way with a previous project. So uh, best thing for me was to take the uh, box tubing that I have, some extra pieces that I haven't used yet. I got this laying on top of the frame, which I know is level and uh, set the angle finder on here, point 0.1, move around, be point 0.0, be dead flat. Um, got this set up, tacked in place, had an extra scrap, uh, you know, extra drop, and uh, used that so that way I have a perfect uh, 45, 45 here. And uh, go ahead, get this uh, unclamped, tack the other side. Uh, reason being, I figured it's easier for me to have this tacked in place and then tack it to the frame uh, rather than do piece by piece because then not only do I got to make sure that both angles are correct um, one, it, um, one way but I also have to make sure that it's perfectly flat I don't need uh, either of the frame rails either going in or out um, compared to each other so uh, that's the reason behind it so I figure give another explanation just in case you guys are out there doing this stuff and don't have a flat workspace. All right, guys, figure I'd take a second and explain this crazy setup I got going on right now. Uh, so for the last few days, I have been struggling uh, with getting this to this point here, uh, just as far as making sure everything's square and uh, show you what I did to what I believe is the best uh, for what I have. So come over here, tight fit. All right. so. I noticed when I initially tacked that, that while it was tight to the frame, uh, it over the you know four and a half foot span back here, it was slightly outside of the frame rail, which was causing a problem, and uh, kept running different things through my head, and uh, getting frustrated. Anyways, so uh, came up with this solution, and I have Unistrut here, tight to the frame back there, and. Uh, what I ended up doing is taking a cut off, a drop off of the old frame and sticking it back here. So uh, the Unistrut's not gonna twist. It really shouldn't. And uh, so that way I have a nice gap there, which it lines up with. And uh, went ahead and used some box tubing with clamps. It was working better than tack welding. And uh, what was happening was this frame, that frame rail was sticking way far out and uh, I used a laser distance finder right here. Shot multiple, multiple locations uh, inside the frame rail there to come up with the same measurement throughout. So I knew that uh, having this in plane, I can then work off and uh, with that measurement and come up with that same measurement in multiple spots throughout 
And just to make sure, because I can't trust this body because it's dented, what I am doing is these, uh, there is a half inch hole on both sides of the frame right there, which I know are in the same point because uh, I measured off of uh, the other rivets. They all came up with the same measurement. Went ahead, took half inch rod, threaded it in here, uh, you know, locked it down in place, used the nut and a washer uh, as an adjustment point with a um, laser level, shot a point across, and then I went ahead and took string and uh, made a measurement on both sides of the frame. For that, I used a speed square and a four foot level, came up exactly where it needed to be, took the string, ran it across from there to there, marked the string, same thing over here, came up in the same spot. So as far as I know from what I've done, that this back half of these frame rails are square and they're square to the frame. So now I'll be able to tack this in place and know because the whole problem is I didn't want to stress the uh, metal out and try and force the box tubing to be where um, in a position where it didn't want to be. I don't want uh, the metal to be uh, you know, under pressure in a sense for the rest of its life. So that's what I did here. Um, figured, like I said, I know it's a, maybe a little bit over complicated or uh, explaining it, but figured I'd show this to you guys. Um, again, if you guys are building something like this and I don't have any experience with it, so this is what I came up with that worked the best for me. All right, so I finally feel like I'm able to make some progress on this portion of the build. The frame itself is tacked in place, and right now I'm focusing on the rear end and also the rear spring setup. And uh, what you guys can see behind me is I went ahead off camera and made myself a rear end locating jig just out of two by fours. Um, used a spacer to the same width as the axle housing and uh, use measurements off the frame so that way I know the rear end is as square as possible can be for at least for me without a, an actual jig and um, Matt was nice enough a handful of years ago to give me this little booklet on steering and uh, chassis setup from uh, way back in the day and he had mentioned uh, about uh, running like an adjustable setup a suspension spring setup for ride height and in here, it's hard to tell, but uh, that's what someone went ahead and has done. So I'm gonna uh, basically imitate that so that way I can fine tune my ride height 
and uh, hopefully not affect the spring itself and so that way I have somewhat of a decent ride. All right, so what I have done here off camera is I've taken a two by four, I've cut it down to the same width and height of uh, what a spring pack would be. For that, um, did a little internet researching, also had the original front spring off my uh, truck. So same amount of leaves, so did the math. Uh, came up with this, drilled a, a hole in there for a locating pin. Um, the idea behind that is with the one main leaf in, you'll be able to uh, sag a little bit uh, get the ride height where it needs to be, but with this spacer, I'll be able to actually know where the spring uh, will sit as far as my um, adjustability goes. So we'll put this together here. All right, so after putting in uh, the majority of the front springs that I had from the uh, original spring pack on the truck, I was able to significantly bring the, the rear up, which was awesome. Uh, she's still sitting a little low, which isn't a big deal. I mean, after all, my longest spring that I had to put on is about eight inches short on either side of uh, this, like, I guess 37 to 40 spring, you'd say. Uh, so it's understandable. Uh, so once I get the right spring pack in there, that should change. Uh, there is a few little things that I need to tweak as far as the rear suspension goes, but that's par for the course. And, um, you know, it, honestly, if the rear uh, suspension changed, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't kill me. You know, there's plenty of other ways I can go. I'm already thinking about four-link setup, 
you know, keeping that in the back of my mind. Uh, obviously, once this truck gets blown apart, it'll get fully welded. I'm gonna gusset here, there, everywhere, fish plate, uh, the frame, so it'll be structurally sound, which will be great. Um, I got right now plenty of room for a suitcase tank, which is awesome because I've been looking up, uh, eyeing up a suitcase tank, which I should just buy before the prices keep going up. But, um, you know, overall, happy with it. Took a lot longer than I was anticipating. Um, then again, I don't know why I think I should get this done in like two days, not two weeks, three weeks. So, um, yeah, overall, really happy. And, uh, Gonna take a break on this, got some other stuff going on, and then I'll get back to it. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you around for the next one.